Hello again all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In the last few videos, we have been exploring the dynamics of the Solis Magna star system. As part of that, we determined the range of distances that Spherus Magna could exist from its host star whilst remaining habitable. But, as was noted at the time, there isn't really anything in the canon that gives an indication of where in that habitable range it would actually lie. In the end, I chose a distance of around 0.56 astronomical units, and asked you to trust me on the reason why. In this bonus video to start out the new year, I will explain why that distance was chosen. While I was looking to see what orbital distance to choose, it struck me that if I knew the orbital distance, I would also be able to work out the time it takes for the planet to complete one orbit. In other words, I'd know the length of its year. And, if I knew the length of the Magnan year, I could have some fun making a possible calendar for the Magnans to use. So, that's what I did. Using this equation, alongside the minimum and maximum boundaries for the habitable zone I had already determined, I found that the year length for Spherus Magna had to lie between around 78.9 and 136.6 Magnan days. Remembering, of course, that a Magnan day is 36 hours long, rather than our own 24. With that range to play with in mind, I started to have a think about what kind of cultural influences the Magnan calendar could have in order to try and come up with a number of days for the year length. The number 6 tends to hold significance within Bionicle, thanks in large part to the set release practices of LEGO. Sets came in waves of 6 and this influenced the story in many ways, the most notable example being the 6 primary elements of the Matoran universe but the number 6 also appears in various other ways too. The number of hours in a Magnan day is divisible by 6, the fusions with the Nui designation being a combination of 6 beings, the Matoran numbering system counting up in unique symbols until 6 is reached, then they begin repeating. 6 just keeps coming up. So, to keep with this tradition of 6 being a special number for Bionicle, I wanted it to be a core part of this calendar. Therefore, I discounted all year lengths within the required range whose number of days were not divisible by 6. Given that no matter what, a Magnan year was going to be shorter than an Earth year due to the calculated size of the habitable zone, I discounted the lower half of that list out of a personal preference for the year length to not seem to be ridiculously short compared to that of an Earth year. Along a similar line of reasoning, I also removed the top half of the remaining range, as, while I didn't want the year length to be too short, I also wanted to make sure that Spherus Magna sat comfortably within the habitable zone, and so got rid of any year lengths that would mean a position I felt was too close to the outer edge. That just left two remaining options, 114 days and 120 days. 120 felt like a nice round number, and, with nothing else to go on from canon, I went with that one. So, 120 days in a Spherus Magnan year, which, using this equation, gives us the 0.56 AU orbital distance from the previous video. Now, it should be noted here that if this were a real system, the likelihood of the year length being exactly 120 Magnan days is a bit slim, with the reality being it would be slightly more or slightly less. But this could be fixed with the addition of leap years like we have here on Earth, where an extra day is added to the year every so often to bring the calendar back in line with the actual motion of the planet. However, given that this is fictional, I decided to keep it at exactly 120 days to save the Magnan calendar makers a headache from calculating all those fiddly leap years. With the number of days sorted, it was time to have some fun and work out the possible subsections of the calendar. Given that I had already decided on having the year be divisible by 6, it makes sense to have that factor into it. So I decided upon there being 6 days in the Magnan week, meaning that there are 20 weeks in a Magnan year. Here on Earth, the calendar is split up into 12 months, with the origin of the length of the month being tied to the length of the lunar cycle, which takes roughly 29.5 days to go from new moon to new moon. However, in canon, this calendar would likely have been set up by the Magnans well before the Shattering, and we have no evidence of Spherus Magna ever having moons prior to this event. So, if we are going to have the year split up into months as well as weeks, then we need to have a different origin for them. One cycle that we know Spherus Magna has that is smaller than its year is the cycle of the seasons, 
with Greg confirming in this quote that Spherus Magna does indeed experience them. Other than this note, I was unable to find any real evidence of what kind of seasonal variation Spherus Magna experienced. After all, just because it has seasons, that does not necessarily mean they are the seasons of spring, summer, autumn and winter that you might expect. While those four are what are considered by many to be the standard interpretation of the seasons, they are by no means the only seasonal system that exists on Earth. In the tropics, for example, it is more common to simply refer to two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season. The Hindu calendar from India is another example where a different number of seasons is the norm, with that calendar having six different seasons in the year, better reflecting both cultural views and the yearly variations in weather patterns that exist in that part of the world. However, for this calendar, I have went for the four season model, mainly because that is most likely the seasonal system Greg was thinking of when he confirmed that seasons existed on the planet. By splitting our 120 day year into four seasons, that gives us 30 days per season. A nice familiar number, given the seasons here are being used for the same purpose as the months in our Gregorian calendar. Given the six day weeks established earlier, this means that there are five weeks per season. For the purposes of this video, I will just be keeping the names of these subdivisions as the names of the seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter, though in universe these would likely have different names, both for cultural reasons and to help make the calendar more global. Given the fact that it would be confusing for an Agori in the southern hemisphere to have the calendar say it's spring when the actual season they are experiencing around them was autumn. Right now we have most of a Magnan calendar year worked out, but when should the start date be? For this, I chose the spring equinox. The equinox occurs twice a year, and it is the day of the year in which the hours of daylight and the hours of night are equal, hence the name equinox. It is also often considered to be the start of its associated season, with the first equinox of the year being considered the start of spring in the northern hemisphere here on Earth, for example. Given that spring is seen as a time of new life, I decided that the start of spring would be the best time to start the new year. I also chose the spring of the northern hemisphere of Spherus Magna specifically, figuring that, like many things on the planet, the calendar has its origins with the great beings, whose fortress was located in the north. There we have it, a Magnan calendar that starts on the first day of spring, has 120 days in a year, with four seasons and five six-day weeks per season. But is it a full calendar? It covers the year, sure. There is one other cycle we have covered in the last few videos that we can incorporate into this system, the orbits of Solus A and B around each other. In the third video of the Solus Magna series, we determined that this orbital cycle would take just under 13 Earth years to complete. This works out to be just over 26 Magnan years. Given that the Magnans have such long lifespans, I think it makes sense that they have another, larger count of time than just the number of times their planet has orbited Solus A, and this is the perfect candidate for that. So, as well as normal years, I suggest that the Magnan calendar also keeps count of these greater years that last 26 of the normal or lesser years. Though, given that my calculations from earlier showed that these greater years actually were roughly 26 and 1 seventh lesser years long, they will need a leap year every seven greater years that lasts 27 rather than 26 lesser years in order to keep the calendar in line. With that done, we finally have a full Magnan calendar. Now, I could have just left it there, but why go to all the trouble of working out how a calendar would look without then actually making a copy? So, in the description of this video, you will find a PDF copy of this Magnan calendar for you to use yourself, specifically for the year in which Matanui arrived on Bara Magna, and with the year number showing the time elapsed since the shattering, which I figured would be a big enough event to count as a year zero. I hope you found this little calendar making exercise as fun as I have, and I'll see you all next time for more Bionicle Science investigations here at the Knowledge Tower.